in the morning and let us know where you're watching us from we'll definitely be glad to sample and hear your feedback we've posted our photo of the day for the socials on x including facebook and insta as well and uh, the rest other threads in tiktok too at 2244 channel on the hashtag in the morning personally you can engage with me and let me know personally where you're watching us from at the brand circle 101 right this is the last conversation of the day the in interview we're just about to have right now. We've been joined live by a powerful gentleman. He is Innocent Matara. He's a digital TV content producer and now turned an entrepreneur. And they're going to delve into stories uh, online entrepreneurship. Literally also how to generate income and the transition of somebody who's worked in the media space and transition to become an entrepreneur. It's really an interesting journey. Definitely you'd love to hear this story about this young man. Karibu Sana, Mr. Innocent, how are you? No. Thank you for having me. All right, Karim Sana. So let's get to know you a little bit. Um, you worked in media. I don't know if your passion is still in media, but you will tell us. You've worked, in, you've worked in the media before and then transitioned to become an entrepreneur. And literally, you're immersed around that world of you know, entrepreneurship and literally businesses and whatnot. So maybe just basically, if you can take us through your journey and how you started up to here you are on TV. <laughs> yeah. uh, so my name is Innocent Matara, as you mentioned. Um, I'm a digital stroke TV content producer uh, with almost a decade experience uh, working for different media industries. So I started as a production assistant when I started in 2014, grew up to a producer, uh, a TV director, then a TV host. Yeah. Then as time went by, uh, during COVID, I realized that there was, uh, there was a gap there was a gap uh, to be filled and this was digital content creation or online marketing. Right. So after, after COVID, we, I was fortunate enough to get training of digital content creation from the Voice of America. Right. Uh, then after that, I decided why not mm -hmm. uh, pursue this online now business as, okay. a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, with this experience I had previously of content creation, yeah. it was a bit easier for me to now try the new field of online marketing right. because I was also uh, managing social media pages for the broadcast that I used to work with. Right. Yeah. That's an incredible transition because I can only imagine somebody who was on TV like me right now, and I love radio, and uh, you finally like morph into a world that people can't hear you and can't see you. Yeah. Has it altered any of your maybe part of your life uh, where people maybe used to see you and hear you on TV and now they no longer hear you anymore? And also, are you loving the part where you're not being seen or heard? Because for me, I love attention. I love being on radio. I love being on TV. I love being loud. I love creating <laughs> conversation. And, it, and you can see sometimes like you literally just flow with it because it's yeah. your thing. Yes. Now, I can only imagine if I stop this. I, I just don't know where I'll be. <laughs> yeah. I can't fathom that. Yeah. So how has it been for you? Okay, honestly, yeah, at first it was depressing. Uh, I was like, uh, what will people say? Uh, and also the, the, the relatives around me and the friends were asking me, how are you, how, how are you gonna survive uh, not working on TV? But it was something that I said, why, why not try it out? Because I had the experience to do it. Um, the only difference is now coming out from a corporate industry to right. the Juakali industry. It's mm -hmm. a bit two different worlds. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I, I miss hosting, yes, but this is something that I decided to build. So I, I decided to build a company. Right. Uh, and a company, when you build it now, you have to give it your all. Yes. Yeah, so I decided to go for the office uh, furniture sales right. because now I, I realize now working with, from the corporate industry, it was easy for me now to also sell to other offices in the corporate. Because uh, of the networks you established for the yes, yes. media industry as well. Yes, yes. And your company is called Furniture or Furniture Guru? It's called Furniture Guru. Oh, so furniture it's a... Uh, furniture in Swahili. In yeah. Swahili, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Guru Guru is a... Uh, I have a story from uh, of the name. <laughs> I met Na Narendra Guru, oh, right. the, the owner of Maisha Mabati. Right, yeah. Uh, during COVID, uh, right. I was producing a property show and yes. Uh, we after after the interview we had like a five minutes talk with him yeah. and we asked him right. what can one do to to reach the top right and uh, the, the guy just gave us a simple answer he told us do what you love and love what you do 
Yes. Uh, so I, when creating the name of the company, I realized why not also add the guru in it so that every time I feel like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm slipping back, I, I, yes. I, I think of the words that the guy told me. And he just said, simple thing, do what you love and love what you do. Yeah, and it inspired that whole journey. Yes, Even yes. the wider perspective and the self-belief that, yes, yeah. even though I'm starting from scratch, but I'm going to make it, which is an incredible thing, by the way. Yeah. And then uh, uh, it has just popped up in my mind. Is it that show that they say there's always something for everyone? Is, is, is it where you met him? No, no, no. It's Pro, a, uh, by Nancy? It's a, it's a different one oh, from, different N from NTV. All oh, right, uh, I yeah. get you. I get you. All right. Yeah. And 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 uh, what I'm learning also from what you've explained is that you know sometimes when you're when you're in this space, it's really unpredictable what could happen in the next minute. So yeah. having a backup plan is just it's it's a saving grace to be honest. And yeah. like what you said, you were in the space and then you transitioned to a business. Yeah. It really just shows the diversification of your skills and the readiness to just adapt to changes. Yeah. And I believe it's a it's a thing, especially in this generation. Yeah, for example now with Gen Z, I remember <laughs> in our intro with my co host yeah. Steph, we talked about Gen Z being extremely tired <laughs> of anything serious, as yeah. especially work. So maybe if you can talk about just, you know, adapting to change, especially when you're used to one thing and how our situation has forced you to transition and literally you have to go heads on. Yeah. Um, so um, it's always a difficult decision to, to, to make uh, when you're transitioning or trying out uh, something new. Um, and all you can, all I can advise someone is you really have to try it numerous times for you to get uh, a satisfactory answer for yourself. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, on the online sales, uh, when, when starting up, if you have less followers and uh, you sponsor your page, uh, the visibility is not as, as high as someone who's got a higher number of followers. Right. So what happens is you really have to just persist. Like if it's content creation, you really have to put content on a daily yeah. until uh, they are visible. So yes. for example, uh, on the online sale, you, you'll sponsor a, p a post, you'll pay Meta. Uh, yes. You pay Meta and uh, they link you up to customers. Right. So, so what happens is uh, when you do a post on Facebook and Instagram and right. you pay Meta, yes. they'll, they'll, uh, they'll put your post uh, to someone who's searching an item that is closer to right. the, the keywords. The yeah, keywords. Yes. So you keep on popping up and yes. doing a recommendation, right? I, yeah. Okay. But uh, to be honest, sometimes you can talk to 10 people before you make a sale. Right. So if you lose Which up, is the hardest part <laughs> as well. For yes. That. Yeah. If you lose up in between, yeah. you you'll get that you are not getting the answer that you wanted, because mm -hmm. some will just come and tell you, uh, "Hi, can I get info, uh, more information about the product?" Yes. Tell them the price, the sizes, in case of that furniture. Right. They tell you, "I will come back." Mm -hmm. Some come, some don't. So kama ilengo by a major wana semati, mteja kisema tarudi ya tarudi. But right. in real sense, some come back and they give you good deals. So yeah. it's a matter of you pushing every day. Yeah. And what happens on social media, even if you're creating a, a personal page for yourself, a personal brand, yeah. you really have to keep people updated on right. new stuff that you're doing. So the more you do it, the more people see your resilience and they support you. And the consistency. Because <laughs> yeah. even, uh, you know, I think a lot of people think content creation is about, hey, welcome to my YouTube channel, <laughs> and today I have Gen Z and Beyonce. That's yeah. not content creation. Yeah. Literally, it's you selling a product that's like literally feeling a need, yeah. or right, or right, like filling a niche, yeah. because uh, you're appealing to specific audiences. And now that you brought up stories of content creation, maybe uh, what are some of the tactics so far, and also the strategy? Because I believe without strategy, even in, uh, I'm very active on my Instagram, but if you just check my posting pattern, you realize. I go from photo to video, photo to video. Yeah. Like I know that that's my posting pattern. Yeah. And a lot of people do not have maybe that schedule of posting. Maybe you're posting on Monday and then next time you'll post <laughs> in 2025. <laughs> but for the algorithm to even recognize you for you to gain followers, like yeah. I did on mine, yeah. you must be consistent with yes. a real photo. Yes. Hashtag. Yes. yes. And that's why, you know, somebody had me say, oh, you have a hashtag. Like, yeah, it's part of the algorithm. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And maybe you can talk about that as well. So um, first of all, uh, maybe just to go back, when you're, you're creating content, you really have to find that niche. Uh, maybe if it's cooking, um, you really have to do an A-B test uh, when, when starting up uh, to, to, to create content. So for example, uh, 
if you're creating, you want to create content and you, 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 you are having mixed reactions, yeah. all, all I can advise someone to do is, uh, why not put something like uh, a motor show and a cooking show or a relationship uh, right. show? Right. So with, that, with those three thematic con 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 content, yeah. you will, w with your key performance indicators, you'll know which one is working for you. Yeah. And for example, if it's YouTube or Instagram, right. Instagram, it will be the number of likes that the yes. content uh, gets. Yeah. Uh, if it's YouTube, the number of views that gets. So for right. example, if I'm, I'm doing two different types of content and one is getting 1,000 yes. views per day and the other one is getting 250, yeah. I will assume that the 1001 is speaking and this is what that this is what the target audience maybe you are you are you are dealing with is interested with and this other one they are not really interested with yeah so once you you you've gotten the content that you want to do the niche now right then it's a matter of doing it on a daily because you have to tell your viewers that on every Tuesday I will be putting content post, yes. uh, instead of now putting on Monday, then coming putting again on Sunday. Right. Then, if if you look at um, from the studies that have have taken place, uh, from from the professionals that have advised us, they have advised that when you put content in the morning, assuming people are going to work, uh, they are on traffic, so they are on their phones, mm -hmm. so people will be scrolling through their phones. Yes. Then. During lunch hours, between 12 and 2, people, yeah. people are now <coughs> going for lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, then they'll be now using their phones. Mm -hmm. Then during the evening, yes. when they're going they're back home, home. That's traffic as well. Yes. That's the evening drive. Yes. So yeah. they'll, they'll be using their phones. So right. within, if, if you do those three posts a day, yeah. Yeah. during those times, yeah. the probability of them getting seen and is higher. The will be really high. Yes. Exceptional. Yes. Right. Then on the, on the hashtag, um, for you <coughs> now to get uh, search engine optimization yes. activated, right. uh, you really have to use all the, the social media platforms, be it right. X, be it TikTok, be it Threads, LinkedIn, yeah. uh, and Facebook. So for, for Facebook, uh, I usually like to use Facebook. Uh, yeah even though it's not a Gen Z thing, but right. if you look at the subscription number of Facebook within Kenya, yes. as per this year, right. uh, it's... How many in total are there? Uh, 8.5 million That's a lot users. Of Kenyans yes. on Facebook. On Facebook. For, uh, for Instagram, it, uh, it's around four. Right. Yeah, for, for Twitter, it's, uh, it's a fast... It's a fast <coughs> paced network, I, I, I can yes, say that. So if you don't put uh, more posts within a day, Right. The post that you did will be will be now right. overtaken by events. Yes. So, if if you one you're selling you're selling to people within Machinani or or your or target audience is in within Machinani, right. Facebook is the ideal um, channel to use. Yes. If you are your you are, you are, your products or your target audience are those tech savvy guys, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll propose that you use X. Because X is uh, that one second is something happening, so you really have to to update that. It's like more of a conversational space, and yes. people are reacting, and there's no filter. Yes. And I love that Elon Musk <laughs> came to like literally yeah. has rasmatized it. It's it's like anybody can post and say whatever they want to say. Yes, yes. Hey man, that's so an incredible thing. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a, it's a good thing. So even if you look at, um, for example, Elon Musk, yeah. uh, I'd say he's a genius, because the, the guy knew that Tesla needed. Right. a marketing base mm. so he had to risk it i remember when he was doing some interview people were asking him will yes. you manage to buy x and right. he told them yeah I will, I will and so purposely elon musk bought x to yes. market tesla and Machine x tesla. rockets and the x space yeah okay. yes yes hey. yeah okay so uh, for, for instagram i'll say it's about lifestyle right more about lifestyle so if you're doing content about lifestyle it's the place to be within Right. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, I, li I like Elon Musk on Inyaki Cyber Tracks. I don't know if you noticed. Yes. It looks a little bit ugly, but I think it's the future. But I'm <laughs> really scared. If, if those are some of the cars you're going to have, try yeah. and check out Cyber yeah. Track. But it's uh, Elon Musk. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Most none is a Tesla. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, mm. interesting. Yeah. Uh, invention there. Mm. Now, maybe in terms now for your business, personally, let's get into it. Maybe how have you strategized it to a point you're able to uh, fish and harvest customers? Especially now that you mentioned your most active platform is Facebook. 
which I feel like, like you said actually has the largest number of Kenyans on it yeah. as well. But you said Gen Zs and even part of millennials they don't prefer it. They feel like it's yeah. it's an old, old school. <laughs> but it was like one of the first social apps, anyways, yes. before it's up, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So maybe uh, what are some of the skills that you managed to use to? Harvest and hack customers. I I'm maybe a happen. It's going to say my to happen. Have you had successful stories as well? Yeah, I've had successful stories. Um, so when 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 you are really selling online, what you really have to consider is like the quality of the images you're putting for people out right. there. So for me, I usually I'm 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 really interested in having nice pictures of right. the product before mm -hmm. and after. So yeah. I, I sometimes like to show the before and after. For example, yeah. if I'm doing a reception counter for a client, right. uh, I'll do the before when we are making it within the workshop, yeah. and then after mm -hmm. uh, we've delivered it, how it looks and feels within the office space. Right. So this one gives someone the believability of that thing and right. just give them the, the old picture of how this thing will be there. Right. Then two, it's about keywords. Right. using the right keywords mm. for example uh, if, if uh, I'm selling office furniture within Nairobi so yeah. uh, if, if I'm doing my my titles they will yeah. be office furniture with are you looking for office furniture within Nairobi yes so anyone who's searching for office furniture on Nairobi right my ad might pop up yeah then the hashtag that you say it's a very crucial thing that uh, you, you you can forget Do you sometime. have your hashtag as well yes for yes. your business and yours personal yeah. Yeah, so I have um, hashtag furniture guru. Uh -huh. Yeah, and now hashtag innocent matara for, for mine. Right, that's for your personal name. Yes, yes. You know, people don't take it serious because they think maybe too it's an ego thing. Really, no. Yeah. It's serious for even the keywords and searching. If somebody yeah. Googles your name, yes. if they search for innocent matara, like you said, or Uncle Sanko, my radio thing, they yeah. definitely just get back to my Instagram ASAP. Yeah. So it's, an, it's a professional thing to have a yes. hashtag, right? Yes, yes. And it, it helps it to drive customers really to helps. your page. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, I was going through uh, one of the platforms, um, Kenya Power for uh, mm -hmm. social media page uh, mm -hmm. on X, and I realized these people have 1.65 million posts. Who? Meaning they've been posting <laughs> for years. <laughs> yes. 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 Right. So, if if you look at those numbers of the post, right? If you're competing against them. It's yeah. really tricky. Exactly. And each post has an hashtag to yeah. to add that to to the product. I'm to regarding the post. The post. Huh. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a consistent thing. So apart ah. from good nice pictures, right. you really have to post on a on a daily mm. or some hourly. Yes. Yes. Depending, like a, like a, a media house, definitely you have to have, I think maybe some of the apps, you come at Twitter deck and create a Facebook as well. I know yes. you've interacted with them. Yes. You can be able to schedule a Twitter and a 7 p.m. and get a 1 p.m. and get in the cash. Yes. Which is a good thing. Yes. Have you done that? Do you sh schedule posts? I, I don't schedule posts because uh -huh. I'm, at least now I have all the time to, to, to now manage the page. Uh, for for scheduling, and uh, this is an advice to those who are, if you are busy, let's say you are having another hassle, right, and yeah. you want to also to grow your page, mm -hmm. uh, so that is when it's recommended for you to schedule in the morning. Then they just pop up yeah, within when you're busy the pages. The yeah, but for for, yeah. for 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 now for, for product marketing, right. it's really tricky because you don't know what is selling on that particular day. Yeah. So, for example, in uh, during Januarys, right. um, schools are our biggest customers, right. uh, clients rather, because now they, they want the lockers and stuff yeah. and also offices. Right. So during December, you, you get that uh, families are our biggest clients as well, because during that time, people want to buy some good furniture as a present to either their uh, partners, parents, brothers and sisters. So you, you really have to change that every 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 minute yeah uh, so scheduling on during if, if you're doing product man uh, marketing mm. scheduling is not advisable according to me yes. because you really have to be in tabs with what is happening right Sometimes and just engage yes. literally organic engagement yes, yes. Yeah. so for example even if you do an ad right um, you really have to go uh, to the meta ad management system and and right. look at this ad if it's making sense because yes there are ads that one click or one message it will it will cost you like 500 shillings yes 
Uh -huh. And that's then, maybe for like an hour, depending on the uh, range of audience you want to reach. Yes, right. yes. Uh -huh. Then there's one that will cost you like 30 shillings. Right. So you really have to go analyze that and see which ad which is working, which one is you. not. Right. Yeah. Then um, you ask me if uh, what I've done different uh, to, to make the products now sell. Yeah. So once an, a client engages me, I, I go a step ahead and make a call to them. Mm -hmm. um, if you make a call to someone, and uh, it's easier for you now to know if this is a serious buyer or they, they just wanted to know the information. So it right. saves you time. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, on the other side now, you get to know the client, what they right. really need to uh, need from you. Right. Yeah. And that's how you like mainly hack it and get maybe to meet the client if it's a serious one. Because yeah. online, <laughs> online the, I, there's a time we were in, on an ex discussion and somebody said, I don't know if you are AI talking or you're a real person. <laughs> so we leave this conversation here. I was like, wow, the future of this online space is really yeah. shocking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is really an interesting thing. Now, uh, I think also. Uh, Placement for online products is really an interesting part. Placement and pricing as well. Yeah. So now for your business, for your nature of your business, yeah. how do you make uh, the graphics of, uh, let's say, your items online attractive? Because the first thing when you are looking for something that you want, you'll go for the most colorful, bold. It has some of the latest features. Yeah. Even for a photo for somebody you're looking at, a celebrity, most of their pages are super attractive. Yes, yes. So you literally click on the first photo and you're clicking on the next. <laughs> No sooner had you realized you're at the bottom of their page, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. So how do you make now for a business extremely striking so that if just somebody is scanning through, skimming through socials, they get to click on it ASAP and maybe they can hack that cell? Um, one, when, 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 when doing a business now, you have to really choose a, a logo that you want to work with. Yes. So we, with, with Furniture Guru, I decided now to use green, red, and black, okay. um, more of the Kenyan flag. Uh, right. Then, uh, if, if you look at the posters now with the combination of green, red, and black, it gives me now the advantage of now interchanging the posters. So today my headline can be, the furniture guru can be in black, tomorrow yeah. it can be in green, ah. the other day can be in red. So also alternating the, the prices and also right. the information there. Mm -hmm. Then um, you really have to keep your page clean. Clean yeah. is... Uh, you, you don't have any client complaining on your page. Right. Um, because... Or even irrelevant posts. <laughs> yeah, irrelevant posts. <laughs> you, you have to be keen because, uh, yeah. like this morning, um, I got, I got I think, um, a scam owner who wanted to... is telling me that I've been flagged for mm -hmm. violating um, a, a copyright uh, picture. Is, is that Instagram or Facebook communicating to you or this no, it, person, this it's, it's pseudo a, person? Yeah, it's a, it's a person, oh. but uh, the information is almost the same way that Facebook brings it. Oh, on Meta. So, on Meta, yeah. So right. you, what happens on that, you really have to go on the profile and, and look at that, right. uh, that person. Mm -hmm. Then you just report and block that person. Uh, yeah. I have a friend of mine who lost a page. Hmm. Um, he had like 3,000 followers. Yeah. Then I, he got he got that uh, that text with the, a link. So when you click at that link, I think now you give them the the, yeah. the rights now to control your page. Right, it's like hacking. It's like you've yeah. already signed into a, and exchanged yeah. your private information, login yeah. details. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I love the fact that I think most in in the IT and uh, tech conversations here we've hosted. Uh, IT experts and tech experts have talked about mm -hmm. stories are white hacking, black hacking. So mm -hmm. I perfectly understand when you say you clicked on a link and you are logged out of your yeah. account and yes. what's happening behind the scenes. Yeah, uh, literally. Uh, and I think it's a good thing as well in terms of people that have a huge presence yeah. on, online, especially yeah. when it comes to business. Yeah. I recently saw an update, I think in Ajita, he style, I'm a high style. There's this stage, I'm a demo, I, yes. yes, I yes. saw it and I was really felt bad for them. Yeah. Somebody hacked their page. I don't know if they got it back, but definitely they can get it back. Yeah. Now you're also prone to such, yes, especially sir. if your business is on uh, has picked yes. and it's really giving. So yeah. you, you literally don't know who's your enemy now yes. that it's an online space. Like yeah. somebody said, I don't know if you're AI <laughs> or you're a human being, you yeah. just don't know who's against you. So yeah. how do you, have you also shielded yourself or protected yourself from such emerging issues for your business? Okay, so the, the biggest, the biggest um, I can say, disadvantage in this business is when you, you sponsor the post, you don't know who's the person looking at it. It yeah. might be a scammer, hacker, or a real client. Yeah. 
Right. So, for example, um, we've encountered several times yeah. um, the story of someone, um, they, they pretend to be a client, but they, they are scammers. So, yeah. someone comes on your page, uh, they DM you and they tell you, hi, can I get this product? Um, at what cost? You say the price. Um, so, I had an incident where this person told me, I want you to deliver something to Parklands, uh, an executive director's chair. Uh, and don't even uh, tie it up, just bring it within the uh, cocoa box mm -hmm. uh, so that I can put it on my boot and take it home. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Have so they made a deposit for it no, at first? No. Um, mostly people don't make deposit because now for the online business, yeah. All of us are, t uh, are like... Yeah, both of you are at risk. <laughs> yeah, we are also suspect. Also, the trust, the trust graphic is just like zero. Zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, let me just try. Yeah. Let me believe it can work. Yes. Yes. So uh, we use uh, we use riders within Nairobi. And for uh, delivery. For, for delivery. Okay. So the procedure is uh, once I get an order, uh -huh. I'll give the rider the number uh -huh. and the product, uh, then the location. Uh, right. We usually ask the, the, the clients to send the pin. Mm. So once we get the location, the rider takes the product to that uh, specific location. Right. On arrival, uh, what the rider will say is, uh, now you have to pay first. Yeah. Uh, after paying, uh, that is when we release the goods. Yeah. So actually, on that on that Parklands incident, the guy manufactured a fake M-Pesa message. He sent the rider. Uh, he forwarded the the message to the rider. So on the, when the rider called me. Um, I was like, let me check, let me check. So I, I checked my Mpesa and I was like, no, si japata bado. Mm. Um, so uh, the, the guy was, was tricky because he was saying, wachia tu wachia hapo kwa mlango, nita, nita, nita kujia. Or oh, he was not at, at he the was delivery within destination. The, uh, yeah. Or oh, he was just with them but trying to <laughs> plot. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh -huh. So we, with, that, uh, with that confirmation from the riders we've worked with, Right. That is the only, at least, uh, solid, uh, I can say, solid safety that we've managed to, to, to right. put so far. Mm -hmm. um, if it's outside Nairobi, uh, we ask clients to now pay for transport as a commitment fee. And yes, yeah. the, the amount of delivery fee that they are paying, they are not paying to furniture guru, they are paying to the respective courier that they've chosen to take right. the product to them. So right. if it's Mombasa, we yeah. use the, the, the Mombasa supplying vehicles, mm -hmm. if it's Kisumu, if it's Central. Yeah. So we have an agreement with the courier services mm -hmm. that once my good uh, is on transit with you guys, mm -hmm. on arrival, you'll have, uh, I, I have the, it's only me who have the authority to release the goods. Right. So the, the, the goods are released after now the client has paid and I have called the office to confirm that yes, payment has checked in. Yes. So that is uh, at least the, s the solid safety that we put. Mm. Yeah. So sometimes uh, we also have people who sell online and they are not they are not genuine people. So th yeah. there's an issue of trust between the clients and us. Yes. So to to mitigate that, you you have to go an extra mile of at least now giving out your goods right. and putting up the safety measures so right. that it reaches there. The client confirms, then pays. Right, yeah. and it will prevent you from, you know, getting involved in such issues. I saw, I think she's called Susan Grace. <laughs> she's also a journalist. Yeah. She had posted a video about uh, some of these uh, online uh, shops where somebody's posting a very enticing product. You want it, yeah. and maybe it's not even in Kenya yet. Yeah. Instead of saying the price, the number, mm. they will like DM for prices. Yes. Literally, why? Why should I DM <laughs> you for prices? Yeah. You're posting at this item, yes. you're selling it. Yeah. Eka price, eka numbers, yes. eka email. So yeah. that if I want it, I'll directly yeah. phone you Fully, up and yeah. we negotiate the price if uh, maybe you're not able to like get yeah. to the uh, cost price of it. And you hack it. See story, oh, DM for prices. Yes, yes. Apo ndo sasa unapeleko una Mbadi <laughs> Gadesa, unarudisha Mombasa, unapeleko Mbadi Dubai. Yeah. Kumbe wakotua pa kawa. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, and also, um, I, I think uh, one caution to clients is uh, um, do due diligence when, when purchasing online. It's a tricky business. Uh, so you have to do, do due diligence. Because, um, for example, if you, if you get like iPhone X, yeah. iPhone X cannot be sold between 20,000 and less. Oh, oh, actually, 100,000 <laughs> and less. I, I don't know. In Nini Nezakwe, I'm going to iPhone 20,000. Yes. Maybe you're in a bad situation. Yeah. 
So unapata mimi and drunk <laughs> at that on top. Yeah. Bad situation and drunk. Yeah. So utapata kuna msema meka. Yeah. iPhone X ngirimbao. Hmm. Then a client goes, hey, yeah. can I get this? They're yeah. told to a deposit. So hmm. you put your money there and it's lost. So doing due diligence, you, if, if for example you are buying or you want to purchase office furniture or yeah. any other furniture type for home, yeah. just you, you can have three pages uh, yes. that you can view. Mm. So th the prices are normally almost the same. Yeah. Yeah. Because there, there, are, there, are, there are specific things that we sell even with my competitors and you cannot like quote higher than the, the standard pr price yeah for example if it's a desk mm. a desk will go between five thousand and six thousand right so you can't get it less than that you can't get it less than when that. if it's second hand and overly used uh, unless it's now second hand right yeah so okay. if you get something like that and someone is selling uh, they've indicated brand new and they're selling two five Mm. and you've seen an imported chair the it's secretarial yeah really you really have to think when the deal is yeah. too good you you think mm. yeah questionable yeah. right and also uh i think instagram has a, an icon where you're able to shop i think it's called insta shop yes have you personally made use of that as well so f for that to happen they they need you they require you to have a website yeah so, yeah so currently i'm working on my you're website on it. Yeah. yeah so that i link it up so the the good thing about instagram also even if it's not the Instagram shop, you can link it up with Facebook. Yeah. So when you post on Facebook or on Instagram, yeah. they can cross post within right. their each other. Mm. Yeah, because now they are they're from the same company. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe now we can delve deeper into it and talk about um, clientele, your clients. Mm -hmm. uh, how's your relationship with them, your customer? care relationship as well and uh, I don't know if it's you're solely running the business as you individually I'm a you're with a group of people maybe if you have how many are they in total and how are you coordinating and also maybe what is the feedback because you know business feedback and customer care relationship is only forever they will yeah. never part ways till kingdom come yes, yes. Yeah, so maybe you can talk about that yeah so um, I, it, it's tricky to run this business uh, solo so i have a have a team also behind me um some are the wholesalers the suppliers some also have uh, other workshops that uh, we, we we take products that we don't make so right. our workshop is uh, within old donom road right yeah uh, and uh, we have like six fundies that we work with yeah. uh, my partner is called coach right and simon so coach uh, does the now customizing of the products and Simon deals with the imported goods right. so you 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 you'll get that some there are some items that you need to get them from the wholesaler the warehouse the one who imports them right. and um, because of you, you have to get a relationship where you can take on credit right. deliver get paid then pay them Mm. So with that, and that means you've already established like a credit trust. Yes, literally yes. trust and now credit trust yes. because you can't just give somebody credit. And yeah. I love the fact that I think now you've made me remember last week and yeah. maybe previously early in the beginning of the year, I interviewed somebody here who said even for starting a business, you don't, you literally don't need to borrow money because also when you're going to the bank <laughs> or the financial institution, yeah. you don't have a track record for that will credify or give you credit for yeah. you to earn that money. For example, you need 500K and yeah. you're just starting a business. Yeah. You don't have history yes. or tracking records. So this means you started organically. Now, like yes. you're saying, you've already built a relationship with fiscal people. Yes. And they know you individually. Yes. Not like a bank, though. Yeah. Right. So uh, the, the building a credit trust for small entrepreneurs is really key to business. Yeah. Uh, because one, um, these people give you uh, items on credit. They yeah. also share the, 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 the prices uh, variations over right. time. Uh, then they, they tell you the new products in town. Mm -hmm. um, they even tell, they even guide you. For example, on on this online business or business where, when I was starting it, mm. I was so scared of sending an item to to Kisumu, then getting paid later. Right. But it's through those people they guided me that mm. this is the right courier to use. Yes. This is the procedure you have to print um, right. detailed notice and put them pay in payment on delivery and stuff. Yeah, it's like easy coach, right? Yes. I think Everybody in Nairobi, at some point, you have used EasyCoach to yeah. deliver a parcel. <laughs> Get yeah. one and even deliver because they are trusted and they have that credi credibility yeah. yes. and safety as well. Because you can't be sending Omena from Kisumu <laughs> to Nairobi 
<laughs> in Africa, <laughs> unapata ni tuna fish. Yes, yes. <laughs> because they, they, they will assure you of their courier services, just yeah. like you were saying. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So for the partners, I have those those two. Yeah. Then um, for the clients feedback, um, I, I may say sometimes that, that sometimes that we have not delivered to the standard that the clients want. Yeah. But do they complain? Because yeah. I also believe there's those rowdy uh, clients. They're, yeah. they're, maybe somebody is just having a bad day, and yes. a bad day is relative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Depending on the client, they'll be like, hey, yeah. me kura okay, yeah, but but uh, if you sift closely and screw into you realize that what they're saying is really true. true. And like they say, the customer is always right, whether yeah. in a good or a bad mood, anyways. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what happens in a situation where we've not met the, um, the quality or the, the, the specific uh, thing that they they wanted us to we really we really now try to to ensure that we don't break this relationship even mm -hmm. if it's redoing that thing yeah. we, we 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 now redo it with the with the clients guide because right. uh, sometimes uh, clients they share picture of something yeah. to be customized mm -hmm. um then you get that the picture was uh, computer generated like yeah. ai generated now we have AI, literally yes yeah. now you're doing it uh, with uh, now the local machines and yeah. Our just our like handling, hey, getting hard hands on with the network is apps come out. Canva, Canva yeah. is good. Canva you is use good. that a lot? Yes, I use Canva a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Photoshop a lot. Yes, yes, exactly. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once you get a picture and the client is not impressed, uh, we ask them to come now to the workshop for yeah. us to redo these to items. Guide you through that. Yeah, mm -hmm. there are also items that we've delivered and uh, the on arrival they are broken. Uh, you, you get the fault is not ours per se because when yeah. we did we, we, we took them to the courier company yes they were in good uh, shape so how do you cater for such so for such uh -huh. we, we we try liars to the we, with the client and ask them mm -hmm. for example uh, I'm a glass in my break I'm a, I'm a glass in my break can you find a fundi within your location yeah. when yeah, hey, that's that's a good that's a good uh, yeah instead, business move. <laughs> instead of very <laughs> few people will tell you, hey, Nimekuzi uh, TV, on your way. Can you yeah. <laughs> find somebody who can replace it and then tell us how much? Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I'd love to buy from such a shop. Yeah, because I, um, um, what happens is, you know, these customers are returning customers. Yeah, by the way. Yeah. So okay. if you if you mess him on the first day. You don't know what to do. You've messed even the next the client. Next, yeah. yeah. Because they already have a history with you. Yes. There, there's somebody also interviewed who, who said what you've said. You you deliver one, they tell another one. Yes. And word finally goes viral. And it yeah. becomes a return a return customer community. Yeah. yeah. I'm a return client community. Yeah. I yeah. I have one person. Uh, I have one client. Um, yeah. It's from Kiambu. Right. So he bought, uh, he bought a boardroom, I think, in uh, November, December. Right. But so far, he's given me referral to three of his friends. Wow. Even yesterday, we delivered one. And uh, what he always tells me is, you just make sure you deliver the right quality. Mm. For me, I will always give you referrals. Right. So supposing uh, like that person, uh, on, the on the first day, we, we messed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But there are also those clients that um, you you feel like wanakawa uh, sumbufu so what happens is it's yeah. it's always good to choose clients right there because uh, if you for me i wanted to to work with office clients right so au ndo wale watuna feel like uh, whenever we deliver to an office and we, I'm, I'm always saying that transforming one office at a time yeah. so at furniture guru our passion is yeah, transforming every one office at a time right so you get that utapata kuna client office na kuna client mwingine mwenye you see the price na bad data at a bargain yes so you, you you try your best to at least accommodate them but where it's not possible you mm. you, you just tell them the truth that hiyo kwa hiyo bay haitaweza yes na ile tuko pole like right. Aitaweza, I hope maybe you, you go, uh, regather yourself, then come back when, when you're ready. Right. Yeah. And is it possible maybe for a client to negotiate? I'm a, 
there's there's this business as well, you know, in a eka deposit. But then for me, my fear is, yes, ni eka deposit, and yeah. then ni come two months later. Yeah. That item is gone, and yeah. I can never get exactly like that one. I miss you, a funny job. Because literally, that's a disappointment. Maybe that is the only shoe you wanted, yeah. and there's no any other design come here, and that is like your best one. Yeah. So make uh, maybe 3,000, maybe the price is 6K. Mm -hmm. And then we're already after a month, Hakuna. I so mean, how do you deal with, with, with that, especially now for this furniture business? I don't know if it's possible for it that is. to happen. It's possible, right? Yeah, it is possible. Okay. Uh, what happens is we have this great grace period that we give out. Oh, um, it's a grace period. Yeah. So if okay. uh, if if you put your if you put a deposit and um, we agree that you're supposed to come pick it within a week, we, we right. give you twenty one days grace period to, right. to pick it within that time limit. Mm. Um, because for furniture, for example, if it's the sofa, you know it will now um, take some space. Yeah, it's consuming space. Yes. Literally. So mm -hmm. the more it stays there, the more it means that I'm, I cannot You're store. running out of space for uh, even your other new stock. New stock. Exactly. Yes, so nice. that is why we give that grace period to come yeah. collect it within that day. And if the client is unable to, what do you do? Do you mm. do dumping? <laughs> no, we don't. So we, what we do is now we, we have an agreement where we, we can reimburse the deposit, then right. sell the item. Uh, yeah, because ooh. at least... Uh, I feel like that's a loss anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is because now for the storage fee and the time, right. and then maybe it's a customized item where yes, it's uh, a specific client who was interested in that thing. Right. It's tricky, mm. uh, but now for business on asema, sazingine lazima uchomeke ndio upate. Literally, yeah. you're, you're burning money or it's spending money spending to, make to make more money. money. Yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe at the, maybe what are some of your trying times? Because each and every business has its own trying time. And uh, maybe you forgot to ask you: For how long have you been in operation since you opened? Uh, we are we are one and a half years old now. Right. Because yes. I hear in business, at least you, you give it six months. So if you end up past six, then <laughs> it means you can yeah. survive and weather the storm yeah. in the market. Yeah. So if you weathered six months and uh, the remaining six, <laughs> and then now you said a year and a half now. Yes, yes. It definitely means you're on the road to goodness. Yeah. So uh, still on that, maybe what are some of your trying times? Like I said, uh, in every business, there's always the highest yeah. and the lowest tides. So maybe for you, what are some of your highest and the lowest, and maybe did you learn from it? Were they hurtful? Mm -hmm. So I'll start with the, um, with, with the lowest times. Um, it's, it's almost like a, a daily occurrence where you, you really don't know uh, what tomorrow brings. Mm -hmm. But uh, th there are situations where now you've, uh, there's, a, there's a, a business I did, um, a project I did, then um, I was told that I w to use my, my capital, then the money was supposed to come in within two weeks. Yeah. Mom, the money came af after two months. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that particular point is where the client has assured you that within two weeks, yeah. you will get your, your money. Mm. So this is where the situation where you even use your private equity to, to yeah. fund the business. So you're getting deeper into your pocket. Yes. Use your own personal funds that yes. are signed for yeah. the business. Then yeah. after you've done that, unapata sasa ata, ata kukula kwa nyumba sa zingine ni tricky. Oh my goodness. You're, you're looking at the days, uh, days and uh, you're yeah. like, hey, rentiko mm. lazima you come up. So this was uh, last last year, December. Right. So, so January was a bit tricky for me because Mm -hmm. If it's not the now the credibility and the honesty that okay. at least I've I've always displayed mm -hmm. with either my landlord and my suppliers, right. mm -hmm. sometimes ninge kuwa nanomba. Yeah, you'd have run out of business. Yeah, literally. because at that particular time, at yeah. my my sister was joining for one, and I wanted to mm -hmm. chip in. Right. And you are looking at your areas in your nafakuli and, and you don't have anything. Have, yes. Then you, you're trying to explain to people mm. like Niaze. And they're not understanding. Yeah, because December, mm. umekuki piga shugli. Right. So unafaku kwa na do. So telling them that I will not have that it right now. Yeah, it's mm. it's a bit tricky. Yes. Uh, then my highest moment, I would say, I, I've 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 supplied to people. I, I never thought I would. Um, mm. I, I supplied the furniture to one ICJ, International uh, Crime Justice Lawyer, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
and for for the online it's it's give, it's brought me some customers that yeah. I wouldn't think I would have met them if it wasn't for online. Right. For example, this this particular time I I, I sold a wardrobe to a, a Chinese uh, lady right. in uh, along along Gong Road. Right. And the conversation was purely texting on WhatsApp. Yeah. So I was like, ah, I'm on this scam. Right. Like you couldn't even believe I'm, it. I'm <laughs> trying to call. They are not picking. Right. And uh, she but was, on message that yeah, she was good. a lady. She's yeah. telling me. Right. I she's talking good. Yeah, I, I, I can't I can't I don't understand English and I'm like wow. whoa. Uh -huh. is there so you had to get an interpretation? No no no. Uh -huh. So the only thing was I think um now there was a person I, they were they were staying with. So yeah. it was easy at least for, for us to communicate, but seventy five percent of the conversation yeah. was on message. Right. Then the good was You there. tried to make a phone call never yeah, picked never picked because now yeah. there will be language barrier yeah so she's texting me that genuine yeah genuinely genuine, to genuine yes uh -huh. so until uh, we delivered that right. is when i confirmed that where uh, yeah. this online thing can can, can really can work work yeah, what was the item you delivered uh, a wardrobe a wardrobe yeah a, a wardrobe yeah, yeah so it will I even cautioned the rider before taking that. Make sure it's going to be wash or Yeah. Because yeah. uh, yeah. yes, yes. even me too, I would, I would be like a Chinese. Well, what, what do you want from me? Want yeah. It's us who want something, something from you, from not me. you Chinese wanting yes. something from me. Yeah. yeah. So um, considering all, I, I think that was the highest level of, because selling yeah. to a Chinese nationality right. when we know that we import from them, mm. it was <laughs> a really, sat right. it was really satisfactory to, to my brand that uh, at least. least. It yeah. just uh, affirmed uh, yeah. the mark that online thing, the online business really works. Yes, yes. And now that you brought it up, the Chinese part, so who are we, do we import a lot of furniture? Because I remember at some point the president was, I think in his speech, could have been yeah. last year, he yes, said, yes. we are going to stop importing. Yeah. furniture yeah because i wonder we have our trees in here in fact we have the best trees i don't know uh, come on mugumo tree yeah I'm on, uh, i don't want to mess it up mm -hmm. i don't know which are some of the best trees so far but maybe you can t you can since you work in that space you can you can maybe try to explain us to us maybe is it because we are importing that the market here is shallow or maybe because maybe also the middlemen and the people who are inter the intermediaries as well and how they're coordinating that business, especially in that curve of imports and export. Is it because of us here, Ama, what is happening? So um, I can say for, for office furniture, almost 70% is imported. Right. Why is it so, by the way? Mm -hmm. If you look at the, if you look at the, the nature of, of the products, they are, they are they're made using machines. Right. Uh, and uh, according to now our level, there are some things that we cannot make. Like, for example, um, a mesh chair, hairdress chair, right. orthopedic chair. Right. Uh, what we can make is the desk. But according to client preference, people yes. still prefer imports Imported. more yeah. than locally made. So this okay. is what we are trying to change. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are trying to, to tell them that locally the quality is good, it's, uh, the comfort is same as the imported, and the yeah. price is very low compared to, to the, the imports. But, um, and again, uh, w what I can say is, you cannot, we cannot run away from, from importing things. Yeah. Because according to the finish, the finish of the product from the imports. It's yeah. very good and that is what we are still lagging behind as the Kenyan economy. Right. For example, if you look at the government offices, right. all their products are imported as much as the president is saying otherwise. Yeah. But to buy Kenya and yeah. use Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's nowhere that uh, you, you'll find uh, the, the tenders given to the local people. Yeah. Yeah, so most of the things are imported. But what I urge to I, I want to urge uh, clients is to know that locally goods are the same as imported goods. Yeah. Yeah. With the, with the advanced technology that we have, we have here. Right here. And Excuse me, Mr. Malewan. There are 
uh, hopefully they are manufacturing a uh, sim sijui ka uliona this i think ile ile anansi wana ICT yeah. uh, CS that is yes. in the wala yes. we are now going to have our own med cell phones right here mm-hmm. but i really doubt because the parts lazima ziko imported sindo yes because i so just keep in your Kenya on a manufacturing yeah. uh, cell phone parts yeah. so m- basically they are imported and then locally assembled, assembled right just, just like cars mm. just like cars uh, uh, everything is imported then assembled mm. so for example if uh, if if we are to talk about locally manufactured phones we have to ask about cobalt uh, right. that makes the touch screen now work yeah Co- cobalt is from congo as right. the previous guest was saying Yeah. And now do we have the factories to do so? Yeah. Yeah. So if we had the factories to do so, it would have helped us. Yeah, stories of carbon emission pia zitakuja hapo by the yeah. way. Yeah. Cuz that is simu kiangalia vizuri umekwambia hapo hadi story na battery na yeah. carbon emission. Yes, yes. Do we even have such facilities right here in yeah, Kenya? Not, we don't. Not yet. Yeah. So yeah. already that has denied us the joy of manufacturing yeah. for some of these things yeah then my, my plea would be like to the trade cs to right akuje akuje kwa grao um to to build to build at least to to, to support the people within yeah. for example uh, if we are talking about now uh, like we were saying to do locally made clothes yeah na gikomba na chomeka every time you know mm. it's i i add up so we yeah. really have to know like if we are supporting these people is it kwetu ni ile story ya kusema kwa mikutano yeah ama during elections and yes. campaigns and, uh, like, uh, and then all of a sudden everybody retreats yeah. to their then yeah. uh, for 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 locally locally manufactured manufactured yeah. items mm-hmm. to prosper we, we really need to to get lower taxes to come a lower taxes yeah or just incentives or rather like even duty free tax free yeah. literally such yeah. to promote yeah to promote locally manufactured uh, the items and the industries yeah so without those unapata bado we 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 have some years to come ndo ndo tufike kwa hiyo hiyo place but uh, with all honesty nimeangalia the uh, imported stuff yeah. na nime compare na the local made stuff the better apart from just the finish the finishing part local locally made the products is yeah. durable and better yeah let me give you an awkward one uh, hey, it's really a sad one so there's a time my dad had passed on and mm-hmm. this is a real experience so we were at Lifinlo home mm-hmm. and to to in a place here called Kutafta casket coffins mm-hmm. yani and uh, the lady who was taking us at Lifinlo home yeah. was saying this one is an imported one like <laughs> half of those caskets at Lifinlo home yeah. literally i was there because yeah. i'm um, speaking from experience <laughs> yeah. most of them that are imported and yeah. kulikuwa na from italy yeah. one from south africa and mostly uh what when you want to is and mostly what wamefanya kwa gava little yeah. because they have the money yeah. there's one that was costing 1.5 million this is a casket coffin <laughs> yeah now i'll, I'll explain any detail this one is made of gold this one has details the silver yes. this one the holding part and that was the time I was like well this is life lifing yeah. so that's when i also learned that the casket business is a big business a big because business. of the wood the mm. timber that goes into it yeah. and some people do not know about this yeah. by the way it's a big business it's a big business and mm. the only thing uh, maybe I, ca- i can ask you how, how do you think those people pray for to god f- to to expand their business yeah <laughs> that was a good one <laughs> I, i saw last week i saw a meme uh, <laughs> a doctor is always praying for you to get sick a person who works at the morgue wants you to die yeah. in a road accident yeah. like it's it's a man it man but like it's it's nature it's, it's happening nature. and there's nothing you can you literally can do about <laughs> it so the person who works at the morgue prays you die get hit by a, a car or something, something so that he sells yeah. his caskets and coffins yeah. and it's crazy but it's life literally it's life it's life yeah 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 so so th- people rather and i think also now that we mentioned cas- caskets i think there's few na uh, isn't maybe the, the cheapest the yeah. ones that are locally manufactured yes. but also when you look at the stories of people that are selling caskets or coffins wengine wamekatalia wamesema oh umeanzisha hii business hapo unataka watu wakufe so yeah. they got kicked out yes, but yes. this person is genuinely doing Do business, business because people will die yeah. they will die and they so, they have to put now food to the table and they don't yes. want to steal so they are, they have to do something right as we exit bra uh, maybe what are some of the lessons you've learned in your business and then uh, maybe you can tell us your final word if people want to buy and access your items where can they get it so 
number one, the lesson you've learned in business since you transitioned from journalist to entrepreneur, the graph in between? Um, one of the biggest lessons I've learned is honesty. Right. Honesty, it sana. Uh, because the moment you're dealing with suppliers, you're dealing with, you have delivery guys, you're dealing with clients in between there, you really have to, to be honest. Yeah. Honest with yourself, honest with your products, honest with your clients, honest with your suppliers. Yeah. For example, um, if you request a 1.2 meters desk, yeah. I can't bring a 1.1 meters desk mm -hmm. because there's 10 centimeter there, that right. the difference. Right. So with that honesty, for example, uh, there's a, a lady um, who paid me and I asked her, she had paid excess of 1,300 bob. Yeah. And I had not seen the, the figure. So I called her and said, hey, would you leave transport? Yeah. And she said, how much was it? So I said the correct figure and looking, she told me, ah, I turned me to my excess. Right. And because the goods have been already delivered yeah. and they don't know us, yeah. we can go away with that. So money. you, you yeah. are at an upper hand to either just yes. like enjoy the, yes, extra the extra cash or honestly yeah. send it back. I send it back. So right. what I did is I sent it back and yeah. with that she gave me another order. All right. Yeah. That built that good relationship with yes. her. Yeah. So we, we, you being honest with the uh, KRA. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, honest, I care. I care <laughs> yeah. Because they will always deduct anyways. <laughs> yes. Because that uh, story is not licensing. So uh, in even registration of businesses as well. Because yes. there are so many deductions in between. Uh, yeah. Sometimes when I say matuke or square, we're talking but it's a must. It's part, in fact, it's part of the constitution. Yes. Yeah. So being honest is with your fundies. Yeah. I'd say just be being honest uh, has taught me so much. Right. And um, the the scenarios that are played within the business, mm. at least that honesty has taken me ahead instead of yeah dragging me back. Uh, I also hate it. Ah, sorry, so they say hate is a strong word, but yeah, I do hate it when, for example, uh, somebody is selling the shirt at one thousand, but okay, for couple they're selling it to you at two thousand. I'm <laughs> like. As in, have you not just sold it to this person? We were at one thousand, and me and I paid three thousand. Integrity and honesty, apo is yes. really. And then another person on a five hundred. So yeah. you're like, we were like, we were magic, we were like, we were like, we like, what's going on? Literally honesty. Yes, yes. All right. So mm -hmm. that is the biggest thing for a business to thrive, and maybe prayers definitely. Mm, you, you God. yeah, you really have to percent. pray for your business and the people yeah. surrounding you because mm. you can't really do it alone. It, yes. it requires a team to to prosper. Yeah, even if uh, you you are the one with the sole idea. Right. Yeah, you really need to have that backup or yeah. just to to shield you in case of any yeah. emergencies. Mm, right. So if people want to purchase your products, where can they access you very fast as we go? Um, on Instagram, Fanichaguru. Um, Facebook Fanichaguru threads at Fanichaguru. So Fanichaguru is F A N I C H A Guru. So when you when you go to our pages, you can look at the products. Uh, you select, then we offer payment on delivery countrywide. Right. We, we we try and reach every corner. So our our main aim is connecting yeah. the product to, with clients, right. making them connect together. However far they may be yeah and giving them now quality comfortable and durable uh, right. products yeah uh, do you feel like you'll make a media comeback when you get a chance to no or yes 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 <laughs> all right so <laughs> we leave it at here so that we don't get overrunning yeah so Sam, thank you so much innocent for sharing your insights this has been a long but a riveting and informative conversation by the way thank you for having me and i wish you the very best of luck we can't wait to see you at the top Thank you.
All right, and that's why we put a plus to it. Thank you so much for interacting with us and hanging out with us from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, my good name is Brian Sanko on behalf of Stephanie and everybody else behind the scenes. We say thank you so much for watching and we'll definitely see you next time right here on Hashtag Why in the Morning at Brian Sanko on one and at 2244 channel. Excuse me, please follow us. We'll see you next time right here.